Good evening, universe. It's Catherine or Cat Fenquist, and tonight I'm going to be doing the bookish birthstone tag. So I originally saw this on Zoe's All Booked. I'll have that link down below, and then I'll also have a link to the original tag, um, which was done like four years ago or something like that. So you can check those out if you want. Uh, but for now, we're going to get started with my picks. So for January, the stone is Garnet. It is used to ward off negative energies. So for this, you're supposed to pick the darkest or the evilest character you could think of. This took me a minute for sure. Uh, I had a couple of runners up and I kind of actually did a poll with my house to see who they thought the most evil villain was. But what we eventually came to was Scathis from Strange the Dreamer. It's really hard to talk about Strange the Dreamer without spoiling things, but I'm gonna try. Scathis is obviously a villain. He's an antagonist, but he's not really a presence in the book. More of the book is dealing with the fallout of his actions. The reason we decided on Scathis is because he's both extremely harmful, extremely powerful, and just incredibly cruel. He does everything for the most selfish reasons and he hurts a ton of people in the process in ways that continue to echo throughout generations. So I thought about a couple of other villains and stuff like that but a lot of times they would have they would have good intentions or they would sometimes do good things accidentally or they just didn't have as much power as Scathis had. So I consider him the darkest or worst villain because he does the most harm. For uh, February, the birthstone is Amethyst. Amethyst represents royalty or regal quality, so you're supposed to pick the king of all books, or you can pick something that has like royalty in it. Maybe it's about princes or court life or something like that. I chose King of Scars by Lee Bardugo. If you don't know about this book, it follows uh, King Nikolai of Ravka. So I thought it was applicable because it's about a king. Also, it's extra applicable because I thought it was super good. I think it's my favorite book by Lee Bardugo so far. Although Six of Crows definitely vies for that spot too, but I just loved a lot of the character development and a lot of the characters that we were learning about, like Zoya in King of Scars is amazing. I do think that King of Scars is the king of the Grishaverse books. Okay, so for March we have Aquamarine. It's supposed to be represented by like a wishy-washy character, someone who can't 100% decide what side they're on or in, in some way don't have a really solid ground to stand on. So for this one I chose Aoki from Girls of Paper and Fire by Natasha Nyan. And I picked her because she is the, like, kind of best friend of the of the main character. She's really bubbly and cute and friendly, and a lot of times uh, this bubbliness, this chatter, will help lift Lei's mood. Lei being the main character. But unfortunately, throughout the book, she starts to fall for someone who is bad news and is then kind of torn between like does she want to take the side of Lei or does she want to take the side of this guy who might not be the best for her. There are some ethical kind of dilemmas with loving who she does. So I thought she was a good pick for not being super sturdy. All right, so for April, we have uh, the diamond. So the theme for this one is kind of the diamond in the rough. So a book that I think is really good, but that isn't super well known. So I actually picked two books for this because I couldn't decide which one I wanted to talk about. I don't know how much it actually applies because I follow both of the authors on Twitter. And so I feel like I'm always hearing about these books, but then they've even said that they weren't as well known. Hopefully it counts. I didn't look up like sales or things like that. So I'm going with it. So for the first book, we've got uh, The Reader by Tracy Chi. It's book one of Sea of Ink and Gold. I think later they changed the name of the series to just like the Reader Trilogy, uh, which I thought was kind of a bummer because Sea of Ink and Gold is a rad name and is part of the reason that I picked it up. Tracy Chi has such a beautiful writing style that pulls you in so well. 
she also has a lot of different perspectives. She has really interesting characters. Sometimes when she switches the perspective, sometimes it will be like you jump to the past or you're reading about a character and you don't know why they're related to the story of the main character. Like, how is this gonna tie in? And then it ties in like beautifully at the end. She has like this kind of mixed media presence in it. So like, see here with this dark smudge, um, it's used to show a like chunk of memory that the character in question can't deal with at that moment. And that's so cool. That's such a great way to express the pain that she's feeling. What a creative way to both be different and but not like gimmicky. It still felt really sincere. It was there to get a point across. It was there to make more of an impact. And I think she did a great job with that. This is way later. I'm just gonna, just gonna, a little flash. Uh, cause I don't want you guys to accidentally see spoilers. She has like these like reports in the middle where, and then reports said this about a particular character or something like that. And I thought that was another way to tie the characters into the world and make it feel different and unique in a really cool way. The next step, I mean, this is still for diamonds in the rough. Uh, I just didn't want to pick one because that's not the kind of person that I am. Where I make decisions. Now we have uh, Timekeeper by Tara Sim. Again, look at this cover. First of all, I love clocks, so I was into it. And then, uh, this book is gay. <sighs> it's an alternate Victorian world uh, where it's controlled by clock tower, so I was like, oh, yes, I'm into it. And then I found out that the main character, Danny, is a boy and he's gay. I feel like I don't read enough books where the actual main character is queer. I'm trying to incorporate more of that into the stuff that I'm reading because I love that stuff. It brings me so much joy. That was the other reason why I picked that up and it was great. Uh, I flew through it. I read through it super fast. Um, it's also in a trilogy like the reader was, but I also haven't read books two or three in that one. I am looking forward to doing so. You guys know how the TBRs are. The romance was well done. The world building was great. Kind of similar to the reader where you have like these excerpts of myth that their like culture and society is built on, like how the clock towers work and why they are the way that they are. I thought those were really cool and interesting and seeing how it tied together with what was going on in the plot. Danny's fun, he's a uh, grumpy, but I also feel like he's not super dumb like sometimes main characters can be i felt like oh yeah okay his his choices are making sense here i can see why he's feeling the way that he's feeling or doing the things that he's doing that aren't necessarily the best idea but i can empathize with why he's doing that neither of those books uh get talked about enough they're both great these are them the diamonds in the rough uh the reader by tracy g timekeeper by tara sim and you should read them the real question is are all booktubers this rambly? Cause did they cut it out? I don't know. I don't know what's happening. So for June, the uh, gemstone, the birthstone is Pearl. Pearl represents loyalty. So for this one, I had to pick a character who was loyal until the end. I weirdly had a lot of trouble with this because in a lot of books that I read, there's like some kind of clash, something like that, that kind of pulls the main character and their friendships apart. So the character I ended up picking was Ziri from the uh, Daughter of Smoke and Bone trilogy by Lainey Taylor. He's introduced, I believe, in book two. Once again, it's really hard to talk about this without giving spoilers for book one. So he's an ally of our main character. And when she gets into some really unfortunate circumstances and is basically trapped with this terrible set of options between helping somebody who uh, abused her and sexually assaulted her or letting down the people that she has pledged loyalty to. Ziri is uh, totally there for her and he's able to help her resolve this problem the best way that it could be resolved but but at great personal cost. So Ziri is the best, was a great ally to the main character throughout the book. And it wasn't always easy for him to be that ally. A lot of times it was actually really hard or he 
had to sacrifice something important to him in order to be able to help her. But he did it anyway, and not because he was in love with her or anything like that. He was just her really good friend. They were just super buddies, and I thought that was awesome. Uh, so he's my pick for loyalty. The uh, month is July, and the gemstone is Ruby. The idea was to name a book that made you mad. I'm pretty easy to please, I feel like. I'm pretty happy when I'm reading. I'm not like a super critical reader who gets really worked up about stuff. So for the most part, I don't read books or interact with books that make me angry. But then I realized that I had a perfect pick for this. I wasn't angry when I was reading it. It's more of like looking back at it and being more knowledgeable. It makes me angry. So the book is Eclipse by Stephanie Meyer. I just want to say really quick that I am not about bashing on Stephanie Meyer for no reason. I enjoyed the Twilight books when I read them. I have a lot of thoughts and feelings on Stephanie Meyer and there are definitely some problematic elements, but that's not really the point of this video. The point of this video is why did the book make me mad? Like I said, the book in question is Eclipse, which is the third book. This book is kind of old comparatively, so I'm just gonna go ahead and put on my spoiler hat. This means that as long as this hat is on my head, spoilers abound. If you don't wanna be spoiled on Eclipse by Stephanie Meyer, that's wild because the book series is so old, but please skip ahead to where I'm not wearing the hat. The thing that made me mad is that at the end of book three, Bella is talking to Jacob and Jacob is about to essentially go fight some vampires. Bella has made it very clear that she does not have feelings for Jacob. She has feelings for Edward only. She likes Jacob as a friend. She does not want to romantically be with him. Jacob has made it extremely clear that he wants her to be his girlfriend. He thinks they make a way better couple. He's warm and wonderful and a better fit and, and all this stuff, which is already kind of annoying because it falls into that kind of trope of, I'm just gonna keep pestering her and keep pestering her until she gives in and then I'll have her. Mostly it's a problem because at the end of this book, when he's about to rush into danger, he essentially tells her he's likely to, to let himself be killed in this battle. Earlier in the book, he kissed Bella without uh, her permission. Edward tells him that if he ever kisses Bella again without her asking him to do so, then Edward will, will rain all sorts of Edwardian fury down upon him. So Jacob essentially says, I'm going to die. I'm going to choose to die. I'm going to kill myself, basically, unless you ask me to kiss you. So she does. She values Jacob and she says, Jacob, kiss me. And then he kisses her and she finds out that she's in love with him. This made me mad for a lot of reasons. One, I liked Jacob before this, but it is incredibly unfair and abusive to tell somebody that if they don't be with you, that you're going to kill yourself. It's very manipulative and it sucks and Jacob was being a garbage person. But then it gets worse. When Bella and Jacob are kissing, Bella is thinking like, oh, this is nice. I'm enjoying this. I'm in love with Jacob. It's this idea of Jacob has been telling Bella that she's in love with him and she just doesn't realize it yet. Through this kiss, she decides that she is in fact in love with him. Jacob was right, Jacob knew. And that is like exactly the justification for rape a lot of times. Like, oh, if you enjoy yourself, then it doesn't really count as sexual assault, or you just didn't know that you wanted this. And that's really unfortunate and really toxic. It really made me like Jacob a lot less, and it kind of put his imprinting on Renesme in a new and more unfortunate light than it already was because he's absolutely using a power dynamic to manipulate Bella into doing what he wants. The point is that he gives Bella the responsibility for his emotional well-being and his life, which could be just a flawed character or something like that, except 
that the narrative then plays into Bella is in fact in love with him. He was right. His sexual assault worked. And that makes me mad. All right, spoilers over. So for the next one, we have August. The birthstone for that is Perido. I think I skipped a month. <sighs> Guys, I skipped May. It's just kind of funny because May is my birth month. I don't know. Maybe I don't want to get older. Uh, that's how that works, right? If you delete your birth month from existence, then you no longer age. That's the secret. All right, let's go back to May. So that's Emerald. The idea is that it balances energy and you're supposed to pick two characters who balance each other out. So for this, I picked Kaz and Anedge from Six of Crows. If you're on booktube, you probably have either heard a lot about this book or have read it yourself. So there are gonna be a couple of like soft spoilers. Anedge and Kaz do not have similar morals. So Inej is much more merciful than Kaz. She is a lot more willing to wound somebody and let them live. Like she's more lenient with people. Whereas Kaz is completely ruthless. He will kill anybody he thinks is gonna be a problem for him in the future. Sometimes murder isn't enough for him. He has to completely tear down their entire existence before he can murder them. When they work as a team, Inej is able to kind of like force some mercy into the situation, balancing each other out a little bit, like saying like, hey, do, do we really need to kill this guy? And then if Kaz is like, yes, well then they still kill that guy. But, but she makes him think about it. And also by believing in her and guiding her and in some cases pushing her to be more ruthless, Kaz helps her defend herself in this place that is being incredibly cruel to her. He helps her learn how to be cruel enough back to survive. And that's an awesome dynamic. I love it so much. Kaz and Inej, great friends. Now that we have May out of the way, let's get back to August because I know how the year is supposed to go. It's fine. The time has no meaning anymore. The gemstone is Peridot, or if you watch Steven Universe, Peridot. And the idea is that it's a very pale green stone. It pales in comparison to other gems. So I want to pick a supporting character who outshines the main character or characters. I read a lot of ensemble cast books, so I don't didn't know initially what would count as a side character, but I decided on Max from the Renegades trilogy. Uh, I think Max is really fun. I always love these tropes where there's like this kid whose powers are so incredible that they have to be isolated from other people. Otherwise it's like a problem. Kind of like the rogue of, you know, rogue from X-Men. Kind of similar, even similar in like powers. Though so he has this big glass city that represents Gatlin City, the, the where everything takes place, so that he can feel like he's a part of the city even though he can't leave his area where he's locked up. I thought that was just like super cute and endearing. And he also tries really hard to be a hero, to be a good guy. He just means well. Max's powers were incredibly cool. Max himself was very cool. I like his story arc and I like how it ended up. I thought it was appropriate the way that things had to be. I just realized I didn't show you guys. I have the book right here. It's Renegades it's by Marissa Meyer. Right, so the next month is September, unless I'm totally wrong about that. The gemstone for that is Sapphire, which is this blue calming stone. It's reminiscent of the ocean. So the idea was to pick a book that calms you. I picked all the Wrong Questions by Lemony Snicket. This is actually a series rather than a book. Um, if you're familiar with Lemony Snicket, it's probably through the um, series of unfortunate events. This book is a lot like that. It is about the narrator, Lemony Snicket. It's a prequel essentially to a series of unfortunate events. It takes place when he is 13 or almost 13. Um, and it's probably my favorite book series, at least right now. Um, I love it so much. You can totally tell that he has been working on his craft. His writing is even better than it was in a series of unfortunate events, but it still has that kind of dark, cynical humor where 
people are often very dumb and refuse to look at the truth of the matter because it's inconvenient or for some other reason like they don't believe kids that sort of thing it has all of those essential elements but i feel that it gets across even better this one is a play on noir books so it's like this mystery and the i showed you guys the first one which is who could that be at this hour fun fact he's uh referencing some screaming that's happening so that's a delight you may be wondering why i chose this as a calming book and i don't really know why either i just know that it soothes me every time i read the series i guess that the cynicism in the book can kind of reflect cynicism that i have sometimes and having that echoed in a way that is meant for kids allows me to be less afflicted by it that's probably the best explanation i'm gonna get plus there are notes of hope in a very cynical world in lemony snicket writing it's calming to me. All right, I'm going to try and be a little bit faster going forward because I recognize that I've been rambling a lot and also my battery is dying. So October, opal, it's iridescent. So we're talking colorful. It could be either the cover that's really gorgeous or a quirky character. I decided to go with the cover for no particular reason. And I went with Muse of Nightmares because look at that, that purple and silver. It's so shiny the like contrast the way that the letters just like yes it's so pretty it's i mean i love the cover for strange the dreamer but purple and silver are such good colors together i love it so much bird if you've read it you know what the bird is um and it has a moon on it i love moons i'm rambling again let's move on all right so for november we've got topaz and topaz is all about resilience so the idea is to pick a character who succeeds despite tons of adversity and the character that i picked and the book that they're from not in that order is broken throne by victoria aveyard and mare barrow i know a lot of people don't like mare or feel that she's a mary sue but i liked mare i liked how she grew throughout the story basically every time mare tries to do something good or effective for anybody because she tries to help a lot of people herself included and for most of the series every time she tries to do that she not only fails but something way more terrible happens that's just the the narrative arc of mare's life but despite that, we have Broken Throne, and it has a really nice conclusion for her. I'm not gonna say that it's unrealistically nice, like she is still definitely really harmed from everything that happened in the other books, but I, I feel that she counts as a character who has survived adversity because every step she takes, something comes to knock her down. So for December, we have Blue Zircon. It's for friendship. The idea is pick a book friendship that you would like to be a part of. Again, I chose two books. We have The House of Hades by Rick Riordan. You probably know that. And A Blade So... A Blade So Black by L.L. L. McKinney. For the first one, House of Hades. House of Hades is just there to represent the seven um heroes of olympus in the series i only picked house of hades because it's my favorite book out of the five and i tartarus is so cool yeah i i want to be friends with the seven heroes of olympus i want to be a demigod uh, i think that would be very cool and very fun also because i love percy and i love annabeth even though I would probably be extremely intimidated by them. I mean, Annabeth intimidates everybody though, so maybe I'd fit in? I guess I just think it would be really fun to get to meet them. I feel like I've gone on so many adventures with them, so being friends with them would be awesome. Also, Annabeth and I could maybe talk about books, or she could show me some rad gothic architecture, or teach me how to weave decently. Next up. A Blade So Black by L.L. McKinney. I love Alice. I, her other friends are okay too, uh, like Courtney and Chess, but mostly I just wanna be friends with Alice. 
She is so cool. She runs through Wonderland slaying nightmare creatures. I want to be hearing about that. Like her best friend Courtney in this book gets to hear about her awesome adventures. I want that. I want a friend who is super awesome and talented and powerful to talk to me about their amazing escapades. That would just be so cool. And it's realistic because I am not that brave and I don't know how well I would do as a hero, but if Alice is being the hero, then she can just tell me and I can live vicariously. The beginning of the book, she's cosplaying as Sailor Moon. I think we could be great cosplay buddies. That's what I want in a friendship. We could go to anime conventions together. It would be so cool. Those were everything I chose. I know I kind of picked extra books, but that's how I am because I'm bad at favorites. If you have any tips for me on how to make a brighter area, please tell me because you've probably noticed the lights reflecting in my glasses the entire time. If you have a way to circumvent that or have a lighter area because I'm a gremlin and I don't know how lights work, uh, please tell me. Thank you. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I realized this was very rambly. Hopefully I'll edit into a manageable size. We'll see. Um, either way, have a good night universe.